participating in this uh, breakout session and give everybody a, a moment to introduce everyone. So uh, I'd like to start with Lehigh Valley Health Network and Dr. Chris Rooney. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Rooney. I'm the Vice Chair of Education and the Program Director at Lehigh Valley Health Network. Thank you. And uh, Tufts Medical Center and Floating Hospital, Dr. Chaz Hannum. Hi, I'm Chaz Hannum. I'm one of the APDs at uh, Tufts and we are newly um, Tufts Children's Hospital now. So as of this week, a, a nice name change for us, so. Great. Well, welcome Tufts Children's Hospital. Uh, Children's Hospital at Dartmouth Hitchcock, uh, Dr. Carolyn O'Day. Hi, we just got to hear me talk earlier, hopefully. Carolyn O'Day, the Program Director at Dartmouth. All right, thank you. And Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Hi, my name is Janine Ronan. I'm the PD at CHOP, but, um, and also Adelaide Barnes is joining me. She's the um, Associate Program Director. Great. And then my program, Sinai Hospital of Baltimore, Dr. Gia Bradley. Hi, everyone. My name is Gia Bradley, and I am one of the APDs at the Sinai Hospital of Baltimore. Thank you. All right, and we have uh, moderators who are residents of the program, and I'd like to give them a minute to introduce themselves. So we'll start with Lehigh Valley Health Network. Hi, everyone. I'm Allison. I'm a third year resident here at Lehigh Valley. Hi, everyone. I'm Kelsey Kaplan. I'm also a third year resident here at Lehigh Valley. I'm Dan Lee. I'm taking the place of Stormy. So my name's not on there, but. I'm also a third year at Lehigh Valley. Welcome, Dan. We'll, uh, we'll make sure not to call you Stormy. Uh, all right, Tufts Children's Hospital. Hi, everyone. I'm Olivia. I'm one of the chief residents at Tufts. Hi, everyone. I'm Troop D, and I'm one of the um, third year pediatric residents. All right, and Children's Hospital at Dartmouth Hitchcock. Hi all, I'm Jess Trulove and I am the Chief Resident here at Dartmouth. Do you have anybody with you this evening that you're aware of? I do, Hi, we everyone. have three residents. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> oh, there we go. I'm Dub Walston, I'm one of the third year residents at Dartmouth. All right, and is Claire on? She was on, I wonder if she got sorted or lost somewhere. Okay, um, well, we'll see if she catches up to us. We'll give her an opportunity if she presents. Yeah, it. and we also have another second year resident, Kirby Gilpin. So, yeah, there's, so a, there's a few of us. <laughs> All right, hi Kirby. Hi, it's nice to meet you guys in the second year. I'm not listed, but I joined it late to the party. That's all right. Uh, we got a message from Claire saying her microphone's not working, but that's all right. She'll be able to help us with looking through the chat box. Uh, and Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. We have Yesenia. I'm not sure if Yesenia's microphone's working, but I'm Christina. I'm one of the chief residents at CHOP. Thank you, Christina. Is Annie on? I'm one of the third year residents here at CHOP. Hi. All right. Hi, I'm Zoe Bouchelle. I'm also one of the chiefs. I'm standing in for Annie Gula. Nice to see everybody. Great. And hi, I'm Chris Tang. I'm one of the third year residents and one of the rising chief residents. All right. Is that everybody from the CHOP group? I think that's our crew, yeah. Wonderful. All right, and uh, you guys have already met uh, me, and so I'm gonna introduce Afshan Najafi. Hi everyone, I'm a PGY2 at Sinai Hospital of Baltimore. Nice to see you all. All right, so we're gonna start with our program introductions. We have about 30 minutes for all of the programs to go through their introductions. Each one gets about six minutes. So Lehigh, if you'd like to take it away. Sure, okay, first thank you um, for the opportunity to tell you guys a little bit about our program. Um, we are located in the Lehigh Valley, which um, is technically considered Allentown, Pennsylvania, but the Lehigh Valley is made up of Allentown, Bethlehem, and Easton. So those three um, cities together then um, make up uh, the Lehigh Valley, which is the third largest metropolitan center in Pennsylvania behind Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. 
Um, we are kind of a cool hybrid type of a program. Um, and I say that because we have a very strong academic focus for the regional branch campus for the University of South Florida, which I know geographically doesn't make a lot of sense, but um, it works for us. The med students do their first two years down in Tampa and then their clinical years um, up with us. And so all of our faculty are um, faculty of the University of South Florida, Florida Medical um, School. Um, and so we have a lot of great academics um, and a lot of great academic scholarly presence, but we also have this really nice um, community hospital vibe, a very small family feel to the program. Uh, we do not currently have any fellows, so our residents work directly with the attendings and um, form really close bonds with them. Um, that kind of lends itself to the great mentorship uh, that exists within our program. So lots of mentors. Um, we do get formal mentorship assigned right at the beginning of training, but then um, everybody sort of Velcros additional mentors onto them as they go, uh, which has been really helpful, I think, to the residents in kind of following their own unique career paths. Um, we have about a 50-50 fellowship um, to Gen Peds. Uh, career path rate uh, with our graduates. We have a 100% board pass rate the last three years. Um, and probably my favorite part about the whole uh, program is just the really great uh, relationships that we forge um, with one another and, um, and really just the great family feel that we have within the program. Um, so I can definitely answer questions during the Q&A session. I know we're trying to make sure that we don't get off track. I did want to just give a chance. To, I could talk forever about our program, but um, any of my residents that are on, is there anything you guys specifically wanted to add or say a little bit about the program? I don't want to put you on the spot. Uh, I can chime in. Uh, so I just echoing what Dr. Rainey said, I think that one of the benefits of our program is our size. Um, I think that being kind of a medium sized program, you get the opportunity, um, especially without having fellows there is that you get um, a lot of great learning experience, a lot of great clinical exposure and procedural experiences. And I think that's one of the great benefits of our program. Yeah, it gives us the opportunity to allow a lot of flexibility to our trainees. So we are six residents per class for a total of 18. Um, and so that really allows us to uh, give the residents the opportunity to individualize their curriculum. We don't have tracks because we can be pretty flexible for each individual resident. So basically you meet with your mentor um, and program leadership and we sort of craft each year the way um, would most benefit each individual in terms of achieving their career goals. So it's sort of like a choose your own adventure um, type of a track, if you will. Um, but I think that's worked out pretty well for all of our trainees so far. Um, we could tell a little bit more about the area as well, just briefly. Um, we are in a really nice sweet spot. We're very close uh, to both New York City and Philadelphia, um, but we do have probably a little bit um, less expensive cost of living than maybe being in those larger cities themselves. Um, lots of great outdoor activities. I'm a huge fan of getting out there and hiking and biking and those sorts of things. So there's no shortage of that um, really beautiful uh, landscape around the Lehigh Valley. Um, and it's definitely an up and coming you know, area for great food and restaurants and wine trails and, and the likes thereof. So we love it. All How right. are we doing time wise, Brett? I promised everyone I would not go over. So. Yeah, you've got about <laughs> 90 seconds left that you're welcome to use if you want to keep. Uh... Sure. Did any of the other residents have anything else they wanted to add? Um, I just wanted to say that the balance between education and service is really um, really great. I feel like we have a lot of educational conferences and really great, really great lectures. Um, every attending is really involved and invested in making sure that the residents get the, not only the clinical experience, but the didactics that we need in order to be prepared to pass the board. And probably the last thing we should mention is that we do have nearly every pediatric subspecialty um, in our institution, despite the fact that it may be kind of viewed as a community hospital. Um, our residents get exposed to all but like two or three subspecialties um, that are in, um, in the cadre. So. All right. Well, thank you guys. Uh, we're going to move.
next to our, our friends at Tufts and their new children's hospital. Hi, thank you. So the logo is outdated. I didn't know when I made this that we would have to, uh, <laughs> I didn't know when they were announcing the news, but we are now Tufts Medical Center, Tufts Children's Hospital, but just about floating hospital because we get a lot of questions about that. So our hospital has a pretty rich history in Boston, which I find to be really interesting. Um, we started out as a boat over 100 years ago. And so um, there's a lot of rich history that we, we love. I believe 125 years is how long we've been in existence in Boston and uh, from a historical perspective you know part of our hospital system also was uh, founded as the Boston dispensary by Paul Revere which I think is a pretty cool you know piece of of being in a big historical city so our program itself um, so we're one of three hosp uh, hospital programs within Boston we're definitely on the smaller side um, kind of in a medium uh, small size program we have about 13 residents um, in every intern year class we do have um, a couple tracks that kind of combine to make that intern class we have two triple board resident spots that are typically filled every year as well as a child neurology spot um, and so that makes up our intern cohort and if I had to use one word to describe what Tufts is or what Tufts means, I would say family. And we've uh, kind of called ourselves the floating family for a while. I think we'll continue to call ourselves the floating family because we really do feel like we are friends that work together. And um, that kind of sense of collegiality, collaborative um, working environment is really what I um, take pride in as being a, you know, an APD. Um, I was a resident at Tufts myself and have now been an APD for a couple of years. Um, and so I really enjoy working with the people that I've worked for a long time and you know we do really pride ourselves in trying to keep our residents within our network as well our um, pediatric GI division chief was a resident a long time ago we have a hematologist oncologist a lot of our hospitalists um, and a lot of people stay at Tufts which I really appreciate because we do like we do like the work that we do and I think more importantly we like the people that we get to do that with so in a brief nutshell I think our um, program is really not that big and our hospital is not that large compared to the other Boston hospitals. And so we really don't have a lot of fellowships. And I think for people that are interested in having that really more one-on-one -on -one experience with attendings, potentially opportunities to do more procedures or just to, to be a little bit more involved in patient care, um, that's one of our program strengths. And so you know, as an easy example, when you're in the PICU, it is you. And um, when you're on nights, it's you. And so we really try to build that autonomy and um, patient care skills that can be sometimes hard when you have multiple levels of learners in different venues. Um, that being said, it can be a little nerve wracking to be just you. And so we do try to make sure that you have as much support as you can. And all of our faculty are really dedicated to um, helping our trainees and understand that this is the way and kind of the spirit of which we practice medicine in and that again collaborative and collegiality um, kind of mindset um, and again I, I really love my training there and I'm happy to be able to give back as is now an associate program director um, one of the highlights of our program is we do just like Leahy um, hats tends to since we're small we're able to really individualize the curriculum so we don't really have tracks per, per se we tried that out when I was a resident it didn't really work well mostly because we realized we didn't really need it um, and so because we're smaller and we have kind of the bandwidth to really pay attention to everybody pretty closely. It's, it's helpful for us to take all nine electives that you have in your three years of residency and really fill and try to create what's something that will be meaningful for you. Um, we create new electives all the time uh, for people who may have a kind of a wide variety of interests. And in terms of you know, outcomes for our residents, we are always a mixed bag in terms of what people end up doing. Some years it's about 50-50 split for people going into fellowship compared to primary care, hospitalist medicine. Sometimes it's a swing in one way, whereas 80% people going into fellowship and sometimes a heavy swing the opposite way with a lot of people doing primary care. Um, we do have a pretty um, long history of being a program in Boston. And so a lot of the primary care pediatricians in the Boston and surrounding metro area were trainees at Tufts. So we have a pretty nice network of alumni, which I think is pretty cool. And related to that, we have a lot of continuity clinic sites, some of them being alumni. And we offer a wide variety of both having um, the ability to be at our uh, medical center in our general pediatrics um, kind of uh, outpatient clinic, but also in community health centers that are close by and also private practices. Who's a nice mix and we're trying we try to tailor learning to really figure out what is best for you um, uh, you know as a, as a learner and what your career goals may be um, other things to consider kind of interesting things about us so we have a resident scholarly oversight committee which is typically for fellowship programs but we 
thought that recently it'd be really helpful to be able to have something that would really help our residents think smartly about their scholarly work. And we've been having scholarly work as a requirement for quite a long time. And so this just really formalizes that process of supporting you. Um, we also have a clinician educator track with our internal medicine residency program. And so three residents every year after the intern year are selected for that. Um, so I love being a Tufts resident and I love being an attending there now. And uh, I think it's a really great place to train. Great, thank you. Uh, do you want to give your residents a chance to speak yeah, just for yeah. a few sure. seconds? The, the slide change was a sign to stop. So I'm happy to let Olivia and Tripti uh, say a, a couple words if they have. I would agree with everything Dr. Hannum said. I think we have the benefit of being in Boston and benefiting from the really diverse patient population there, but also from a resident perspective are able to um, get out of the city pretty easily, you know, take an easy weekend trip to Maine or Vermont. And I love living there. And I also love the fact that our program is a nice size, not too big. Everyone knows each other really well and that we're resident driven. Those are my favorite things about it. Um, and I just want to echo what um, Dr. Hannum said about the um, ability to make your curriculum as in individualized as you want. Just this month, I'm doing um, my own PICU elective and um, just uh, that's something I'm interested in and just really was able to create um, the elective exactly how I wanted it to be with going on transports. And um, that was something that I had full support from, um, from my program leaders and made an elective exactly how I wanted it to be. So definitely a lot of support there. Great, thank you. And just to add one more thing, just about our program leadership. So our program director, Sarah Ross, she is the um, chief of our division of pediatric intensive care. The other APD, um, Jackie Boulay, she is uh, one of our uh, associate medical directors of the NICU, and she's a, a neonatal uh, neonatologist. And then again, I'm a general pediatrician. So we try to give a little bit of breadth of experiences. And the last thing I'll end on is that if you love Halloween, we are the program for you. Every year we have a very fierce competition for a class prize of best costume, which is decided by our patients in the hospital. Well, we're going to try to figure out how we can do that this year with COVID. But um, we, we love a little uh, con competitive spirit sometimes, even though we do consider ourselves to be very good friends. All right, thank you, team from Tufts. Uh, we're gonna move on to Children's Hospital at Dartmouth-Hitchcock. Thanks, Brad, I appreciate it. So again, I'm Carolyn O'Day. I am a neonatologist uh, by training and program director by passion, let's say. Um, we are another small program. We have seven residents a year for a total of 21 with a chief resident. And you'll get to hear from a couple of our residents as well as our chief uh, shortly. And you know, what I would say is uh, from a program highlights perspective, we truly are a world-class academic medical center. Um, we're affiliated with the Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth, and we have an Ivy League institution in a small town setting, and we really benefit from the scholarship that exists across the board. Um, we also are housed in our building as the Dartmouth Institute, which many of you may have heard of the Dartmouth Atlas. Uh, the classic case is variability in tonsillectomies amongst children. Um, I remember learning it about it myself as a medical student, but the Dartmouth Institute um, does a ton of research uh, in health policy, accountable care organizations and the like, and our residents have the opportunity both to work in research with um, researchers at those institutions as well as only available to residents within our institution after graduating residency be part of the leadership and preventive medicine residency program in which you get your MPH through the Dartmouth Institute as well as um, have two years of training and, and end up board eligible per for preventive medicine which is a really uh, unique opportunity for us. As everyone has said from a small program perspective, you know, the real bonus and benefit for us is those longitudinal relationships that you develop with your patients, your faculty, and your colleagues. We too view it as a really individualized pathway for every resident. I, I sort of joke that if I had true tracks, I might only have one resident in any track on a given year. And so being able to help each of our residents devise that path for them uh, is really excellent. And we have the full complement of subspecialties. And so if somebody has a particular passion, we find a way to make it happen um, and really utilize uh, that individualized curriculum to its utmost. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we really have small town charms uh, with year-round outdoor adventures 
cultures and big city culture and arts. Uh, being at an Ivy League institution just down the street, even in times of COVID, they've got lots of stuff going on. Our art center just had Trevor Noah on a um, sort of one-on-one -on -one conversation. Dartmouth students and, and faculty and residents could zoom in to and and get his take on life jake tapper is up next um, as an alum of of the institution from a curriculum perspective our scholarly activity and our qi curricula are really top notch our residents all are expected um, to have completed a project and all of our graduating seniors present at pediatric grand rounds they are the highlight of the year every spring um, and it really shows the accumulation of their work over the three years we also are part of the Northern New England Advocacy Collaborative, which giving the shout out to University of Vermont and Maine Medical Center residency programs. Our three programs come together every year for a conference. We just finished out a four day Zoom conference all about advocating for children in our region. Um, and what it's really allowed us and the other programs to do is think about advocacy from a research and scholarship perspective, not just sort of boots on the ground advocating for kids in our clinics and on the wards on a daily basis. Um, and, you know, in terms of graduation, we also sort of could swing in a variety of directions. I always say over a five year time period, we've got 50% of people going into general pediatrics and 50% of people matching into subspecialty fellowships. And they match in really strong programs across the country. So I always tell our residents that what our program gives to them for fellowship applications is letters of recommendation of people who truly know you and have worked with you. And that is a powerful thing. Um, I'm also the fellowship director for our loan uh, fellowship program in neonatology and uh, I can tell the difference in those letters, um, the ones where faculty truly know them. So that's my spiel. I always feel like it's more powerful to hear from the residents what they love about our program and why they've chosen it. So I'll let them take it away. I will start with I love the program that I'm at currently. Um, and I have learned when I was doing the application process that not only do I love the academics at Dartmouth, but the um, kind of like wellness of each resident as a whole and how seriously they take how well you're doing throughout the whole process of your whole you know, residency program. That's kind of a, a big deal um, to make sure that you have a good work-life balance, that you're getting the academics that you need as well as um, you know, you're sane enough to continue to practice the medicine that you love. I just wanted to touch on, I know a lot of small programs talk about the family feel, but I truly felt that coming to Dartmouth. Um, we have great relationships with our attendings. We are all on a first name basis with them, text them about things in our life and things that we're struggling with and going through daily. Um, and they really treat us more like colleagues um, and mentors than kind of the hierarchical system that I experienced at some points in medical school. Um, and, you know, being a small program, I want to go into subspecialty and I knew all the cardiologists, for example, within my first month of residency. Um, and so you really get those relationships built early on. Um, and then I, another thing I wanted to add about our area um, that Carolyn touched on was um, just the year-round outdoor activities that I absolutely love. I'm from California, so I, I'm not um, used to the seasons that we have out here in New Hampshire and Vermont, um, but every season there's something that you can go outside and enjoy. So whether, you know, I go canoeing and camping in the summer, um, in the fall, our entire group is going apple picking tomorrow, and then you can go skiing after work. Um, it's amazing. All right, uh, great, thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Claire. Sorry, my microphone wasn't wor working before. Um, but I just wanted to add to that, that all the residents here are so nice and supportive and everyone gets along, which is one of the, one of the big things that attracted me as a applicant. But then seeing like Kirby said, when, once we get here, the one-on-one -on -one time we've gotten with the attendings, which really helps with comprehensive learning, as well as the breathtaking area that we're in. And we'll be having an open house uh, next Tuesday. We've posted, shared it with future PEDS res where you can get more Q&A with our residents and get more of a feel of what our program is all about. And with that, thanks, Brett. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you, everyone, from the Children's Hospital at Dartmouth Hitchcock. Our next presenting group is going to be the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia.
Hi, thank you. Um, like I said, my name is Janine Ronan, and it's a real pleasure for us to be here. Tell you a little bit about our program. So we are a big program. We have over 57 in interns every year, but I think one of the beauties of pediatrics is pediatrics just embraces a lot of people that really have a great collegial and teamwork atmosphere. And despite our large size, we actually do feel like a family. And um, hopefully um, my residents can highlight some of that as well. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunities to going to the first children's hospital in the country at CHOP. Um, one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is that CHOP is both a quaternary care center and a community center all in one. So you will get an opportunity to explore like the whole breadth and depth of pediatrics all within one roof in our 600 bed hospital. So there's so many opportunities and lots of opportunities to actually individualize your curriculum um, to be able to best prepare you for whatever your future um, steps are. Um, one of the things I want to highlight before I turn this over to um, other members of my team that are here is that we most recently switched to a new um, scheduling system called X plus Y. And um, X plus Y is a really kind of unique to PEDS um, way of doing some scheduling. It's been around in the internal medicine colleagues for a while, but allows us to um, really be able to focus on your clinical experience at hand. Um, so when you're on inpatient rotations, um, you don't go to clinic during that time. Instead, you do clinic as a separate time. And we've really been able to build a lot of individualized curriculum and opportunities where you can explore longitudinally um, different subspecialties during our Y time or your ambulatory time. And we'd be happy to talk a little bit more um, about that. Um, but with that, I want to turn things over to um, Dr. Adelaide Barnes, who's one of our associate program directors. Good evening, everyone. Um, so happy to be here. I just want to underscore that, yes, we are a large program, but as one of our other um, associate program directors says, we're, we're fabulous. We, we love the size of our program. Um, it may be large, but underscoring what Janine said, we feel like a family. It's a great community. There's a lot of com camaraderie, a lot of collegiality, and that actually inspires and energizes me um, as an APD. We are committed to making you all leaders in pediatrics, to supporting you, to mentoring you over um, the course of your three years. So I can say that I was a, I was a resident there and a chief resident, um, and I'm still here and super proud to be an APD, but I want to turn it over to some of our um, residents to talk about different aspects of the program as well. Hey all, I'm Chris, I'm the third years. Um, I just also wanted to speak to the sort of the benefits of going to a large program with a lot of subspecialties and fellows. I think um, when I was applying, I remember being concerned about like, do the fellows interfere with learning? Is it something that's a plus? And I really do feel like having the fellows around has been such a huge benefit to my learning. Um, they're such a, like a wealth of knowledge and a resource for us. And on our very complex subspecialty services that we rotate on, it's really helpful to have that extra hand, um, either one text away or on the floor as well and I don't feel like there's any sense of hierarchy between like um, approaching the fellows or the attending it's been very easy to, to talk to them and ask our questions um, I'm always asking for my understanding and I'm always learning a lot every day I work with the fellows and attendings here so I love that and just a quick plug that I do agree that CHOP is definitely a big family I think um, there's the worry I think when you apply that you're going to get lost in such a big group and will you get to know people but we definitely know everyone in our classes and I think for me it's just been a lot of close friends and even more close friends and a nice side benefit that usually there's someone who's available to hang out at all times uh, with a class that big. Hi everyone, I'm Christina. I'm one of the current chief residents. Um, I agree with everything that um, Janine and Adelaide and Chris have said. I think one of the things that I have loved most about my time being a CHOP is that there really is endless opportunity to be involved in whatever you want. Um, so coming here, you're going to meet um, a lot of the leaders in pediatrics, so people that are really at the forefront of developing clinical trials, bench research, med ed, quality improvement, and so I really felt like coming here, I would have so many opportunities, and that's definitely 
been the case. And I think one of the best parts is that not only are these people like national global leaders in pediatrics, but they're also so approachable and nice and really want to have residents involved in their work. And I think that's a really unique part of CHOP that you can be on rounds with someone who invented a vaccine and then they still want to hear about your life and want to talk to you and invest in you as a resident. And so that's been a really um, wonderful part of my residency experience. And then I also just want to say that X plus Y is the best. Um, it's, I think, just a great scheduling change that really kind of separates the inpatient from the outpatient and allows for a lot of protected space for residents in both periods. So, yeah. I don't know if we're out of time or if we have more time. Yeah, I think for the sake of time, if you guys uh, just want to briefly wrap up, that would be yeah. wonderful. We're wrapped up. That All right. <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank you guys for, for speaking on your behalf. And uh, I would like to move to Dr. Bradley for Sinai in Baltimore. Hi again, everyone. Thanks for having me. So Sinai Hospital is also a smaller program. We are the uh, third largest hospital in Maryland and the largest community hospital in the state of Maryland. We're located right across the street from Pimlico Racetrack where the Preakness is held for those of you who are horse racing fans. Uh, we serve a very diverse patient population from the underserved West Baltimore uh, population to a large Orthodox Jewish commu community and we receive referrals from Southern PA, Western Maryland, the Eastern Shore of Maryland, all over. Our program director, Sybil Pencil, is a hospitalist. I am a pediatric gastroenterologist, and our second APD, Jenny Hart, is a hematologist oncologist. We have a phenomenal chairperson in our Department of Pediatrics, Dr. Aziza Shad, who last year was named one of the top 100 women in the state of Maryland. Uh, our program has eight residents per year for a total of 24, and then our 25th is our chief resident. We have a very diverse resident complement of which we are very proud, including USMD graduates, uh, Caribbean resident uh, students, DOs, foreign medical graduates, you name it. Um, and like many of the other programs said, our residents choose various career paths. Again, like some programs said, some years it's 50-50 for fellowship versus primary care. Some years are a little more fellowship heavy. Uh, we have a wide breadth of subspecialties available at Sinai Hospital, just about everything you can think of. And if we don't have it, we'll get you uh, to a local hospital that could uh, help you in that rotation. We have a very strong continuity clinic experience. We have a very strong inpatient unit dedicated to family-centered rounds. We have a, a board prep curriculum, a noon conference curriculum that's really meant to help our residents excel and pass the board successfully. Um, I do have our two of our residents, Brett, who's been your moderator, and Afshan, who is one of our second year residents, on the call with us. So I'll give them some time to share their thoughts about our program and hospital as well. So. Brett. Thank you. Um, I'll be brief so that Afshan can have a, a moment to speak, but uh, I was a former pediatric critical care nurse at a large institution in the Northeast. Uh, their program is also in one of the other rooms somewhere here this evening. Uh, and I, I specifically sought out uh, Sinai in Baltimore because of the uh, close-knit community involvement, uh, the fact that they didn't have fellows there so I could have more one-on-one -on -one attending time and more procedural experience, and the fact that they were able to uh, allow me to tailor my experience uh, to get me towards the anesthesia and critical care path that I wanted to be able to partake in. Um, I have loved my experience at, uh, at Sinai, and I certainly think that anyone here who is uh, thinking that we are a small program, just remember we may be small, but we are definitely mighty. Uh, so keep us in mind. So Afshan, if you want to speak for a moment, go ahead. Yeah, sure. So I was thinking that there were some reasons that I chose Sinai before coming in. I knew that it's a small program, so I'm going to have like one-on-one -on -one experiences with the attending. There is, There are no fellows, so I do everything firsthand myself from like the intern year till second year. We do 
lots of procedures. We are the like the doctor for the patient from the very first days. They um, they let us to have the ownership for our patients. And then I saw the fellowship match rate because I want to go into fellowship and I was so impressed by the fellowship match rate. And after I started, actually, I started my residency, there were so many other reasons that I actually fell even more in love with my program. And one of the biggest is, are the people. I love them. I love their attendings, the residents. We really get along with each other. The other thing is that I honestly have never heard no as an answer. If you want to do research, if you want to do a, an elective outside the hospital, if you want to work with American Academy of Pediatrics, if you want to go to NIH, if you want to uh, work in an urgent care, if you want to have a gist of private practice, they let you have it as your electives and they really individualize like your curriculum to your needs. So that's something that I really like. And the other thing is that um, we are very focused to the medical and clinical aspects of being a pediatrician, but also to the ethical and communicating with um, patients. We actually have like noon conferences on how to communicate bad news to your patients. We have ethical um, like noon conferences once a month. And so it's all aspects of being a good pediatrician that we learned there. And I'd like to add that Baltimore is a pretty phenomenal city. I did not grow up in Baltimore, but I have really grown to love it. We are well known for boating and crabs and hiking and skiing. And again, like other programs, many various outdoor activities. There's plenty of arts and culture and really, really good food to eat. Uh, getting around the area is very easy and there are so many different places you can live that are affordable. Um, you don't have to be an Orioles and Ravens fan, but you kind of get pulled into that when you move to this area. So uh, you will have to like baseball and football just a little bit when you come to Baltimore. Uh, so I'll kind of end there. So we have time for questions. I would like to add that on Thursday, October 8th, we are having a virtual open house and that is advertised on Twitter and Instagram. So you can find the link to register at those places. Thank you. All right, great. Uh, so we're gonna move to some question and answer period. And so the first question that I see uh, will open up to all of the program directors. And it says, uh, can we get real about step cutoffs? Who uses them? What are the numbers? Is there anything different this crazy year? Thank you. Are there any program directors that would like to address the fact that COVID times are uh, calling for some drastic measures and people may not have all of their steps taken uh, ahead of applications? And, and how are you guys addressing that scheduling issue? I can start. Um, so Chris Rooney again from Lehigh Valley. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think anyone would be lying if we said we didn't look at a step score ever. Um, but I can definitely tell you that uh, we are, and frankly have always, regardless of the COVID virtual year or not, really, really strived to make sure that we um, review every application in a very holistic way. So knowing that, um, you know, test scores are not the be all end all about what makes a great pediatrician. Um, I think that's obviously important to keep in mind. Um, we don't have one hardcore number that if you score below it, don't bother, you know, applying. We really, um, we really like to see everyone that's interested in our program apply and then take a good look at your application as a whole um, and make some decisions from there. Um, and then I do, I can, I can speak for Honestly, I'm on the APPD um, recruitment um, and uh, national committee looking at all of this this year. I'm trying to make sure that everything is done, you know, in as equitable a way as possible. Um, and I really have been so, uh, so proud of the programs across the country because everybody's really on board with understanding that there's going to have to be flexibility this year. And we have to understand that there will be situations where people don't have every single thing in their application lined up perfectly like you know they may have in years past so um i'd be surprised if um if other people would answer differently i think everybody's gonna gonna look at this season with a lot more flexibility than maybe you know years past don't stress guys it's all gonna be okay i, I will echo um that is uh, i'll just say ditto <laughs> yeah, same for us we understand that 
not everybody may have their step two scores. And like Chris said, uh, the APPD has been phenomenal and everybody's on board with really taking that holistic look at the application. And, and we understand all the difficulties that there have been. And just to round out, we actually don't have any um, cutoff scores and have never had cutoff scores for, um, for the step exams in the past and will not be adding that to anything that we consider this year as well. All right, this, uh, apply to the programs you want to apply to. Do you know, like trust the process, I think is, is, the, is the thing and, and try hard not to go overboard. Think hard about where might be the right program for you. This next question is uh, directed for Tufts and it says, how much opportunity do you have for research and publications? Excellent, so I actually responded to um, uh, that privately just, uh, but I, I'm happy that you brought it up. I think the most important thing, and I, I think any program probably would say this too, is that if you're really wanting to have scholarship that will lead to publication, there will be ways for you to find mentors who can lead you to that process and to help you be successful. Um, I think the most important thing is that scholarship oftentimes is thought really broadly as QI projects, medical education work, clinical basic science, translational research. And so it's really about, you know, if you're really wanting to have publications and research be a, an important part of your career, I think you can really get that anywhere. It's about finding the right people in the kind of small niche areas that you may already have interests in that may take a little bit of pre-work, but that probably will lead you to the best success. So at Tufts, it's really up to you in terms of what your scholarly project will be. And it's really, our, you know, our job as program directors to guide you and to help you find mentors if you can't find them on your own. Great. Uh, Chris Tang had put a note in there. Chris, if you want to take your question and, and roll with it from CHOP. I would love to roll. The question that I had uh, signed up to answer was, how would the different programs describe life outside the hospital? What's the go-to fun activity to do or a place to visit in the area? And how's the food scene? So I'm really excited about this question because I love the Philly food scene, being a strong foodie myself. All my co-residents know that my Insta story is essentially just food after food, and Philly is a bomb place to eat. So uh, that is one of my main activities, is just discovering new places. There's constantly new restaurants popping up, even in these times in the past couple of months. There's been some really great restaurants coming up. Yes, shout out to Amanda, Philly food is the best. Um, some like really good Szechuan food, Oh, that's amazing. Gastro pubs, there's happy hours sort of all over the, um, the city that uh, are opening in a socially distance appropriate way these days um, and respond to the current situation, but are really great. And I think um, that is one of the big pluses of living in Philly. I think it's very livable, walkable, um, and easy to get around, but there's such good food. Um, other things that people do in our residency, there's a lot of runners and active people. I don't know if I count as one of them, but there's a, certainly a strong running club and Strava scene. And we have a really nice um, bike path, running path along the river, uh, right in the middle of Philly that goes all the way up past like a scenic route through um, the museum and past Boathouse Row in Philadelphia, which is really nice. And then besides that, you know, Philly, even if, you know, the city itself isn't enough, which I couldn't imagine why it wouldn't be, but we're close enough to like hiking stuff out in um, the nearby areas. Um, and then there's always things like orchards and people sometimes just take quick trips. Um, a little bit less nowadays for sure, but um, I really love living in Philly. I think we have a pretty active life for all kinds of styles of hanging out. All right, I'll open it up to any other residents who would like to rival Chris with their love of food and activities for their local areas. Um, I'd like to, to, I'd like to rival that. I think in Boston, um, <laughs> Um, one thing about um, now Tufts Children's Hospital is we are um, in the heart of Chinatown in Boston. We have amazing Chinese food, Asian food in general. Um, one thing we do um, a lot of times, out, you know, after work, we, we get dumplings, um, we get um, pho, we get just, there's a lot of great food in the area. Um, there's a neighborhood of Boston called the South End, which has some really nice up and coming restaurants as well um, that the hospital's close to that's a close walk. Um, we also, um, in general, so I guess that's food scene, but in general, um, Boston's a, a, it's a small city, it's a walkable city. Um, so there's little neighborhoods um, within Boston um, that have different kind of um, areas. There's the North End, um, there's the Seaport area, there's the South End, and they all have kind of their own characteristics. And as residents, um, 
as Chaz, um, Dr. Hannum said, we're a family. We, um, we're a pretty social residency, I'd say. We um, have what we call after Wednesday mandatory lecture time. We go out, um, you know, if you're on an uh, outpatient rotation and kind of don't have to go back to your clinical duties, we like to go out um, and, um, you know, get some food together, get some drinks together, and just really de-stress and talk about life outside of work. So, um, we just went on a, we're big also on, um, on resident wellness. Uh, that's, that's been really important to us as a, a program. We just did a, um, we actually just did a kayaking trip along the Charles River. Um, Charles River is a beautiful river that kind of splits Boston and Cambridge in half and um, just went apple picking. So a um, lot of great, a lot of great opportunities in Boston as well. Great. Uh, so we have just a, a few seconds left. Uh, Dr. Bradley, if you just want to take uh, a couple seconds, uh, how do your uh, how do your how does the program view applicants who are undecided on whether they want to do a fellowship and, or go into primary care? So we do offer an individualized curriculum, and we ask residents you know, somewhere towards the end of their intern year to kind of think about what they might want to go into. But we have a very strong mentorship and advise, advisorship program to get them there, and then we tailor individualized curriculum blocks in the second and third year towards potential interests of those residents. All right, I feel like most programs will, will work with any applicant on trying to find their place and uh, it's not really a deciding factor on who gets to, uh, to be admitted. So we'll see you all in the group here shortly. Thank you. Welcome back everybody. If you could just make sure we're muted back in this big room, we're gonna get started here in one minute. Looks like most of us are back in. If you are from program leadership, we can't thank you enough for your participation this evening. It has been so wonderful. At this point, we would like to let you enjoy the rest of your Friday evenings as we transition to our resident only portions. So once again, we thank you so much um, we'll have our recordings posted and, and be in contact afterward for some, for some post-webinar information. So thanks again for all the programs who have joined us tonight. Okay, so how this, um, this next session is going to go, we'll probably run to like 9.30 or 9.35. Um, that seemed to work, be a good chunk last time. So um, what Dr. Frona is going to do is he's going to randomize everybody into about 25 breakout rooms, and he'll make sure that there's at least one resident in each. It gives a really good resident to applicant ratio. At that point, um, you guys are welcome to use the time as you wish. However, what they've done in the past that seems to be really successful is some brief introductions because the groups will be so small. I'm from here, I'm excited about going here. My favorite thing this past week that happened to me was, it doesn't have to be um, serious at all, it can be fun and open. And just to begin getting comfortable asking questions, um, kind of practicing the ability to turn yourself on during a video interview will be very helpful for everybody. Um, and then asking the residents the questions that you really want to know and might not ask um, anyone else from the program leadership. The, the residents are here to, to give us a very specific um, and honest insight and to know that anything that you discuss tonight um, will be kept confidential within your breakout room and we ask everybody to um, honor that as well. So with that, Dr. Frohn, I think we are ready to randomize our um, wonderful after hour participants. Looks like you started already. <laughs> awesome. And yeah, just to echo what Nick said, really utilize this time. Um, we're, we're so lucky that we have so many residents um, who came out tonight for the um, Northeast and Mid-Atlantic um, session. So um, we're very thankful to all of you. And yeah, enjoy. All right, I'm going to move you guys now, and then we should be pretty good. I might make a couple of last minute switches just to make sure we have residents in each room. So. <laughs> 